photography uh, company Eastman Kodak. Shocking the business world yesterday with news that it's moving into the pharmaceutical ingredient uh, production business with the help of a $765 million uh, U.S. government loan. Join us now for more on this deal. James Continenza, executive chairman of Eastman Kodak. It is good to see you and uh, welcome. Thank you for having me this morning. You're welcome. Is this a done deal? There are some people saying that the government's got to do some due diligence or this, this part of the, this agency of the government that, that is providing the loan. Do you expect this? Can, we can bank on this, James, because we had quite a move in the stock yesterday. <laughs> well, we feel very comfortable that we can bank on it. We're, we have some work to do, but we wouldn't have probably made the announcement and everyone come up and do what we did yesterday. We had uh, Dr. Navarro. We had, you know, Adam there, who's the CEO of the uh, CF. We also had uh, Rear Admiral uh, Bolacek. So we, we feel very comfortable we're going to get to the end game. We signed a letter of interest, and but we've been working on this for a few months. We, we feel very comfortable we're going to get to the end game or we wouldn't be probably sitting here. In recent uh, correspondences with shareholders and the like, I don't think there was any even intimation that, uh, that, that something like this was in the works as recently as May. What, was it? Was there, James? You know, I, I, about two months ago, we started so approximately, but they were very, very high initial talks. You know, when the pandemic started, Kodak wanted to see what we could do to participate. We were making hand sanitizers, face shields, PCB boards for ventilators. And we started going down this path, but it was so early. There's nothing really to mention. We were just, one of our core companies has always been chemistry. Uh, for over 100 years, we've been doing chemistry. And we do make some non-starter materials, non-regulated KSMs today. We realized we could do more. The government realized they could do more. They kind of reached out, and uh, we, we found a path that makes a lot of sense for the uh, American uh, public to help bring the pharmaceutical protections back to America. I mean, we have seen a, a move in the stock, and we just saw it today that, that is just absolutely staggering. I mean, we are in this environment where things like this have happened with, with some other names. I, I do have a question, though, about whether sure. you can... Uh, lend any uh, insight into this. I mean, the volume is, is very average, was very average uh, in Kodak. On last Friday, 74,000. Uh, last Thursday, 80,000. Last Wednesday, 52,000. On Monday, 1.648 million shares. And then Tuesday, the news came out. How do you account for that, James? Any idea whether, whether someone had, had wind of this? I mean, we didn't see the move in the stock until Tuesday. But that, that is so far and away, that's a multiple of the average daily volume over the, over the last, you know, over a long period of time. Any idea whether this got out? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, this has been a pretty tight kept secret, obviously. We read it to the last day, basically. So um, I couldn't tell you what influenced that or didn't. I don't know if it was a well-kept. It doesn't look like it was a well-kept <laughs> secret. That, that, well, that, we, we, we knew for over a week. <laughs> okay. So this is a, um, a loan that gets paid back, like a, uh, like a lot of uh, corporate loans would be paid back in 25 years or so. And the, I guess the question I have, can, is this going to be very profitable for Kodak? Because there was a reason that we outsourced a lot of the basic ingredients as a country to these pharmaceuticals to places where it was much cheaper to do this, in India or in China or wherever. Is this going to be profitable for, for Kodak? It is. There's, you know, again, right, our expertise has been in chemical manufacturing. We're repurposing about a third to 40 percent of the buildings we have so we don't have new construction to uh, within this uh, entity as we build out. So by repurposing, we're using buildings that we already own. That drops a lot of our costs. And then through continuous manufacturing and innovation, we feel that we can become very competitive. Uh, the park we're building in is Eastman Business Park. It's 1,200 acres, has its own power, steam, waste recovery, rail system. I mean, the infrastructure's there. I'm not paying for that. Those are huge costs that come out of this, you know, the, this entity. And uh, that gives us a very competitive advantage going forward. So, yes, I think, I think we'll be very competitive.